the Lord. Let's all stand tonight. Amen. Did anybody come ready to worship the Lord on night two of revival? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you expecting great and mighty things tonight? Amen. Come on, put those hands together.
testimony in the house that exemplifies every word of this song. Brother David Baker, would you come up here from Bell County, Kentucky? We believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, some of us go through storms of domestic situations, marriage problems, some storms are financial. I know this song is ministering to everyone, but this brother here had a storm of cancer to attack his body. It came to this side of your face, is that right? I can't even tell which side it is. We're gonna show you a picture as soon as they get it up there. The cancer had already went through the bone. Where all was it, brother? It was in the bone, it started in the bone, went into my neck, lymph nodes, and it just gave me four stage cancer. But God came on the scene. Didn't have any radiation, didn't have any chemo. I just spoke the name of Jesus, and I, I'll take God still heals. Can you say amen? He still heals. What else do you need? That's what they said when that man laid by the gate called Beautiful for 40 years. They said we could not doubt it because there he stands right in front of us. Glory to God, no matter what storm you're going through tonight, we had over 40 something thousand watching last night, at least that many are watching right now tonight. Over 15,000 this morning while we were in the day service. And I want us to unite our faith as we sing this chorus one more time. This is, that's what revival's all about. It's to take your faith another level. It's to take your praise another level. It's to take your standards another level. It's to take your commitment another level. There's no sense in coming to an entertainment center. There's no sense in coming to a showtime, uh, showcase cinema. We are here to be changed. We're here to be changed, to be conformed to the image of Christ. This is a miracle. And if you need one, you can talk to David after church. It's unbelievable. His wife was already being prepped on how to take care of him with a feeding tube in the last stages of his life because it was literally gonna choke him to death. And he was gonna watch him die being choked to death. But right before, right before the enemy had a chance to get a hold of his juggler vein. The blood on the back of Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to hear a lion's roar of praise. Come on. Yes. Come on, let's your praise. Let's your praise. Sing right time. Rain came with you. My house was built on you. That's why we're safe tonight. I'm safe with you. I'm gonna like it. I'm gonna make it. When it imparts, sing right. Hey, don't wait, blue. Hey, 
before you're seated, I want you to testify to somebody. Just tell them, just tell them something good about the Lord before you're seated. Come on, tell them something good about the Lord. Oh, glory. and the singers and the choir know how much you appreciate them tonight. Lead us in worship and praise. Well, how many are you glad to be in God's house on a Monday night for revival here at Community Family Church? We welcome you. We welcome all of you who are joining through the web stream. And my goodness, if you were here today, Pastor Brian, will you please stand so we can honor you, the man of the Lord? What an incredible message. And is Brother Robbie here tonight? I don't know if he's, he's preaching in kids' church. Oh, talking about kids' church, they had two or three baptized with the Holy Ghost last night. Hallelujah. We appreciate our kids' pastors, Pastor Craig and Amanda Browning for everything that they do. But I'm telling you, I am just so glad to be in God's house. I said it before, this is my favorite time of the year because I love to connect with people from literally all over the United States and Canada. We've got some folks from Canada over here, Toronto, Canada over here. We, we just have a good time in the Lord, Jesus Christ, amen. So look at somebody next to you and say, you're the best looking person on my row. I don't know who dressed you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to let, we want to let David and Margaret Hayden, we want to give them a shout out. I got to talk to them tonight. They're celebrating 56 years of marriage tonight or today. We, yeah, stand for us so we can give you some honor. There you go. But we want to welcome all of our guests, all of you who are come from far and wide. As Pastor Josh says, a church alive is worth the drive. So we're so glad to have you. A couple things before we go into our offering declaration, I'd like for you to know that we do have food for all of our guests after service. So what you'll do, get back in your car, drive around this, this side of the building and go to the very back tonight at Cincinnati Style Chili. Uh, compliments of the women's ministry. So they've got that prepared. And we'd like to thank Pastor Tad and the youth for last night. But that is completely free, no charge. So we want all of you to go to the back and be blessed tonight. And you know what? I have not seen, does anybody have a revival t-shirt you can model for me? I forgot to do that. Oh, my wife. <laughs> oh, watch the whistles. This woman's taken. <laughs> We'll be celebrating 20 years this year, so hallelujah. But these t-shirts are available in the uh, central lobby. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate that. They're available in the, in the central lobby, so make sure you grab one of those. And then we also have, if you get hot, you're in a Pentecostal service, so we've got funeral fans for you. If you want to take one home, you're more than welcome, but you'll see them laying around. I've already moved 10 or 20 of them since I've been in the building. So Revival if you'd like one of those, fans. no, I like, I like funeral fans. We got, we got to go back to our roots, people. 
So your revival fan is available to you. Uh, we got a sister right here. Can you hold that up for? There you go. So if you want one of those, they're available in the lobby. And then you do not want to miss tomorrow night. We have missionaries from all over, and we're just so blessed. That can you let all of our missionaries know how much we love and appreciate you all? So grateful. So tomorrow night, we're going to have a display in the central lobby where they'll be displaying their ministry items, and it's always a wonderful time, so that'll be tomorrow night. So you want to, before you go down to grab something to eat, go check that out, or maybe check it out before the service, but we want them to be blessed, and and they're such a blessing to us. And then um, Pastor has product out in the central lobby. I know uh, Brother Johnny does. Pastor Parrish, we're so glad to have you in the house all the way from Oklahoma. (laughs) And his daughter, we're glad to have you all. But he has product that's available. He'll be preaching tomorrow at 10 a.m. Look at somebody next to you say 10 a.m. And those of you watching, it will be online. So we will have one preacher tomorrow that will be at 10 a.m., Pastor John Parrish. But make sure you get his books because last year he didn't have a single one left. So you want to make sure you get those before you leave tonight. How many of you have been blessed by the revival so far? You know, we're only six services in so far. We've got a while to go. God is going to do something amazing. And he's blessed us so much. And I want to thank every one of you who have partnered with the ministry, whether that's financial or your prayers, whatever it is, with this new sanctuary. We just thank you from the bottom of our hearts because it takes all of us working together to see this vision come together to come to pass. And when I cannot wait in a couple years when we see that new sanctuary off to the side here, it is going to be a miracle. But all of you who have given sacrificially, we thank you and we love you. And we can't say enough how much we appreciate you. Can you just let everybody know one more time how much we love you? I know you're clapping a lot, but there's a lot to clap for. Let's go ahead and say our offering declaration tonight. As we bring in today's tithes, offerings, and over and above giving, we are believing the Lord for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs and better jobs, checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarships, creative ideas, finding money, healing for our spirit, soul, and body, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost, and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Let's say this with great fervor tonight, that we are blessed and we will be a blessing to others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe that, give the Lord a great big amen and amen. Several ways to give. We have these drop boxes available for you. If you'd like to use a check or cash, you can place in the envelope that's located right in front of your seat. The easiest way, at least for me, is text to give. Text the word give to 859 359 3997 and then follow those prompts or on your smartphone maybe on your computer you can go to cfcky.com if you're watching online you can send in your gift and if you do make sure you send in a praise report or a prayer request so we can be praying or celebrating with you the goodness of God but you can send that to Community Family Church at 11875 Taylor Mill Road Independence Kentucky 41051 let's bow our heads tonight Lord, we thank you. Lord, from the bottom of our heart, we thank you, Lord, that we have the breath in our lungs to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Lord, we will praise you no matter what we go through. We will honor your name. And Father, Lord, we are so grateful for what you've done in this revival so so far. The, The word that has gone forth and the music and the praise and the worship that's gone forth. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless everyone who's connected with this ministry. Lord, we ask you to bless those who have something to give and bless those who don't. And Father, Lord, we'll never cease to give you all honor, all praise, and all glory. And the church says, amen. I know you've been standing, but would you stand and God bless you as you give tonight. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing a chorus. Let's all stand together. Joshua's going to sing, but... I. 
Aren't you going to sing tonight, Brother Josh Bowman? You're not on the schedule. I just put you on there. And uh, you and Brother Deal, once you all get together and you work up a deal with us, all right? Come on, you two get together and you talk about what you're going to do. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Let's just sing a little chorus while they're preparing. Hallelujah. Let me walk. Blessed Lord in the way thou hast gone. Da, da, da. Tonight, we're going to be hearing Mary Lynn sing, I don't know when, and I'll, I'm not going to pull one on you tonight. She's saying, thank you. And all you young people, this is Miss Barberville Youth Camp. My wife was Miss Youth Camp 1978. Can you beat it? Huh? 1962? Miss Youth Camp, what's it feel like to be Miss Youth Camp? Oh, well, it was a challenge, but it was, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, we're so glad. I love the Brock family. Our families were connected with them long, many years ago when Brother Marion used to come, first of all. Marion was the first one I think we was connected to. And then back in maybe 62, 63, we are connected with Ernest Brock. And I pray that we get all these Brocks together and sing something. That's what I want to do. I'm going to get, a, I'm going to get adopted in the Brock family <laughs> for this song. And Missy, you're going to get adopted in the Brock family too for this song. And maybe a few more of us. But we're so thankful to have evangelist Josh Bowman with us. Josh, you were watching that service last night Sometimes we underestimate the power of the internet. Pastor Greg Adkins called me or texted me. He said, I watched the service and he said, the anointing came on me like when I was a teenager. He said, I wept and I cried till I was staggering because of the anointing that was in this house last night. And we're thankful for that. We're thankful because God has allowed us you know, when they poured oil on my head when I was 14 years old, I wasn't happy about it. It was about a pint. George Hale did it. The Lord spoke to him to do it. That's why he did it. He went down my head, down my neck, down my back, all the way down. I was skinny, so it made a nice little path all the way down my back. But the prophecies began to come forth. They said my voice would be heard around the world. It would be heard in many nations. And I was so upset with that. The only thing I thought they were going to do was make me a missionary. And the only missionary stories I ever heard, they all died in Africa. <laughs> and <laughs> I heard them, they said Everything he owned was in a shoebox. And he's buried in Africa. And I said, I don't want everything I own in a shoebox. And I don't want to be buried in Africa. But we're seeing it come to pass. We're seeing those prophecies come to pass. And we're so thankful for our missionaries from Guatemala and the Central America. We have Brother Ted Flynn, if you'll stand up. We have Johnny Hughes with the American... Uh, Native Americans over here. 
Pat and Mary Lynn are focusing a lot of attention in Cuba. Praise the Lord. We have Brother Troy Marshall with us. We gave a big offering to the Ukraine. And you know what? Here's where we sent it. And we're so thankful. Brother Troy, we're so glad to have you, missionary to Ukraine. And we're just grateful. Brother Dale Yurton is another worldwide missionary evangelist. He will be preaching Wednesday morning, coming in maybe tonight. I'm not sure when he's coming in. But we wanted to connect world missions with this service because this is what it's all about. Go into all the world. Let's give a great praise as Brother Josh and Brother Dee will come. Whatever you're going to sing. I'd like to say this before I sing. Uh, Brother Greg sent me that message this morning. I was so overwhelmed by the response of people, people's lives were touch. I'm just a common man. My songs are simple. They're straightforward. And it blessed my heart so to know that somebody's life had been touched. And Brother Tommy, the same evangelist, I think, poured a whole bottle of oil on my head one time. I, <laughs> about the same age. And, it, and he gave me a quarter to wash my hair. And I'll, I'll never forget it. It ran all the way to my shoes. And, uh, but you have so much talent, so many great singers. I desire the anointing of God more than anything in this world. I hope you don't mind another simple song. Uh, I've always wanted to be grateful. My heart's desire is to be thankful for what God's done for me. I've tried to pass it along to my children, my grandchildren, and one day on the couch, I sat down with my little Martin guitar and I wrote this little song. For making the sun to shine Putting the stars in the sky For flowers that bloom The ocean so blue Thank you, Lord For every spiral that sings And makes sweet melody For rivers that Rain and the snow, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. I thank you. Plenty to eat. I thank you, Lord, for this church to worship and pray, for the freedom I have to, for your spirit I feel, your presence all. Oh
not stand I thank you Plenty to
Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brother. I tell you what, anytime you're up here, you better sing for me. I like it because he sings from down in here. You can be seated for just a few moments. Believe me, it's going to be very few. This morning's message by Pastor Joseph Bryant from Bryant. Is it Bryant or Bryant? I got Bryant down. Is that it? I thought it's... You know you get up here and you think you're going to make a mistake, so you make one, so, so you'll think it'll be right. <laughs> but uh, Joseph's message was so touching today. And uh, then following Joseph was our missionary, Robbie Grubbs, and God really anointed him powerfully. And as I told you last night, and this morning I said a little bit about it. We're so thankful for how that God is moving on the hearts of the people to help us build this sanctuary. And we can't thank you enough. And we're just so appreciative. Well, let's turn to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 20 and verse 9. In the morning, Pastor John Parrish. We're not having two speakers in the morning. We're having the double portion. And uh, we could, might not even be out by 1 o'clock. Who knows? <laughs> But if you can't be here, and I'd like to challenge every pastor that's watching in the tri-state area, or if you're driving distance within a couple hours, it'd be worth your drive. Be worth your drive. We're living in very difficult times. And, uh, but I've been preaching it, as Brother Robbie preached this morning, since 2005 after a revelation that the Lord gave to me right here in this church on December 31st, New Year's, New Year's Eve, right over here in this corner where these young people are sitting, I was in a vision from heaven. I came out here to feel sorry for myself. That's the truth. There had been some pretty big heated battles that had taken place. And it was the end of the year, and I was, came here. We, we didn't have watch night service because it was on Saturday night. And so we, but I still came out here to pray. But I really didn't come to pray. I came to feel sorry for myself and say, why did all this happen last year? I never got one answer on that, by the way. I never got one answer, but while I was doing my complaining all at once, I began, just like the brother said, started thanking God. And then all at once it shifted around. My complaining didn't last but about 15 minutes, but it did last at least that long. And then it shifted around and the Holy Ghost took me into an unexpected vision. And this vision was confirmed with a outpouring of the Holy Ghost at World Harvest Church that lasted for six months. It was on every Christian network. An invitation such as Andre Crouch asked me to come to California. Invitations to the largest church in Paris, France, running 16,000. The largest domed building in South Africa I don't know how many thousands, thousands and thousands. I never got to go to all of them. Preached Winterfest three different times. And the vision, the bottom line is after that, the Lord began to deal with me on an apostolic renewal and a Pentecostal refreshing. 
And I'm telling you against everything, it seems like the wind's blowing a different direction. I've held on to that. I've held on to believe that we're not in the great tribulation. We are in the greatest hour we've ever had. And that's the hour, the hour of the door of the ark is open and for the salvation of many to come in. And there cannot be any hesitation We cannot lighten up on this wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ. I've finally come after all of these years. I'm now to the persuasion. I don't believe we actually have seen the latter rain in its fullness yet. Because if the fullness of the latter rain is going to match the book of Acts, it is going to be such a divine salvation of souls that I don't believe we have seen that worldwide latter rain outpouring, which gives me great anticipation that I can't wait to wake up in the morning. Let's all stand together. This is Jeremiah. He's riding under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He's called the weeping prophet. He's got a lot to cry about because... He's the prophet that sees the transition of Israel go from the glory to a place of bondage. Till he sees the king of Judah walk away from the temple that has been ravished, gold taken away, silver taken away, the walls broken down, the gates burned with fire and the king of Judah of Jerusalem taken away in chains, walking like an animal for 700 miles. Jeremiah is the prophet that witnesses all of this. He's got something to cry about. And the burden gets real heavy on him. And this is what he says in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse nine. It's up on the screen. Let's read it together so it goes way down deep. Then said I, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Just for a few moments, we're dealing with the subject, fire, shut up in my bones. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Let your word be preached with love, mercy, compassion, demonstration, and power of the Holy Ghost. And we will give you all of the praise and all of the glory in the mighty, wonderful, matchless name of Jesus. Let the church say, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Just for a few moments this evening, we're dealing with the subject, fire shut up in my bones. Our text is found in Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, the the word of God tells us and teaches us in one of the pastoral uh, lessons that God gives to us, he said that all scripture... When he says the word scripture, the, the canonized new covenant had not been written yet. There was not a book containing the Gospels and the book of Acts and and those things. They were just letters that were written that were floating around. They had not been canonized, compiled together. Book of Revelation had not been placed together. And so as we see this in the Word of God, when he says all Scripture, he's talking about Genesis through Malachi, the Tanakh, which was placed together, the Tanakh being after they came back of from Babylonian captivity, the completion of the Old Testament canonization of Scripture. So when, when, they, when the Word of God says all Scripture, now he does mean the New Covenant also, but particularly he said all Scripture. Now this is very important because you know, we know to fight the devil, but we know what happened to him. The Bible said that he's under the feet of Jesus, And he's been defeated. 
by the cross of Calvary. We know that we have the enemy of the world and the Bible says that the, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, we overcome by the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. We know we have that enemy and I've been pastoring here for 42 years, been in the ministry for 51 years and for 42 years of pastoring this church, basically all we dealt with was the spirit of the world. People would get enticed by the world and they would sometimes, because of persecution, as the Bible says, sometimes they would fade away. They would, uh, what we call backslide. They'd get away from the promises of God. We always knew that we had to deal with the devil we always knew that temptation came from the evil one. And the devil comes in various disguises and costumes. And we knew how to fight the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. We knew how to take the sharp two-edged sword. But there is a third force of opposition that we are dealing with in this last days the Bible calls this a woman, a whore, a great harlot, the mother of harlots. She is a mixture of religion that is a religious spirit that's going to be carried by the Antichrist. He's going to use this religious spirit in order to gain ground, in order to accomplish what he needs to accomplish in order to put in place what he needs to put in place and he's gonna use it through this apostate spirit that is now an opposition to the powerful triumphant church that Jesus said, I'm gonna give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth is gonna be bound in heaven. So now the voice of this apostate church, the voice of this whore, the voice of this mother of harlots is now, now getting more vocal every day. So recently I've heard some of the words coming out of this spirit of the end time. And the words say that you need to unhitch yourself from the old covenant. You need to... Uh, Stay away from the old covenant because it don't have enough grace. And, uh, and, and recently, some of this that is being taught to young pastors and entrepreneurs and those that seem to be having thriving churches, they're being led by false teachers with false doctrines that, are, that have come in. The Bible said they've come in unaware. They come in without you even knowing it because they throw a little truth, but underneath that truth, there's some uh, deceptive things that are being said. And the last thing that was being heard, said that I heard with my own ears said that you must ground yourself in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because the letters of the epistles can be confusing. What that means is they talk too much about the gifts of the Spirit. Talk too much about sanctified living. Talk too much about of such were some of you. But now you're washed. Now you're justified. Now you're sanctified. Uh, they talk too much about uh, uh, the being filled with the Holy Ghost. Talk too much about the, the power and the display of God. So stay away from those epistles. Stay away from everything. Just engage yourself in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, I'm gonna tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you're gonna live a victorious life, you better get to search the scriptures. And he said, you better go to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, Ezra, Nehemiah. He said, you better go to Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. I want you to search the scriptures because when you search the scriptures, you're gonna find out that Abraham was talking to me. You're gonna find out that when Nebuchadnezzar looked in that fiery furnace, he saw me. 
you're going to find out that when Jacob had a wrestling match, he was wrestling with me. You're going to find out when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, there was a pillar of fire. That was me. There was a cloud by day. That was me. You're going to find out when they needed water, that when they smoked the rock, that rock was me. And you're going to find out that I'm he which was, which is, and is to come. For these are they that testify of me. Let's give God a shout of praise for his word. We can keep on adding services here. We're, we're not having, we're not, we can keep on. Somebody said, well, you're having four services on Sunday. We can have eight if we want to. I won't be preaching them all. There's enough preachers around here, they can fill them up. And somebody says they're called to preach, I'll say, wonderful, you got a four o'clock service, fill it up. Let's hear you preach. You wanna know if you're called or not? You preach two times and then come to a 1230 service and let's see what you can do. You'll find out if you got the anointing or not right off the bat. Hallelujah. You'll learn how to preach without a hallelujah, without an amen, without no, no, nobody there quivering and shaking and everything else. You'll learn if you don't have the word of God, brother, you're in trouble. You're gonna have to learn how to stand on these things. And one of the reasons, other than for growth and other for evangelism, which we believe in, and I told the church, we're believing for that new building, but should something happen, should the government do all, we don't know what's ahead of us, but should that happen, it's never going to dampen our evangelistic spirit. It's never going to dampen. If, if, if we never get out of these four walls, and we will, but if we never get out of them, we will have revival, and we will be under the glory spout, and we will see the outpouring of the Holy Ghost if we have to have church every day of the week, morning and night, with different preachers preaching. Hallelujah. There is no excuse. Hallelujah. There's no excuse. Jesus said, search the scriptures for these are they that testify of me. They testify of me. And he said, the word of God is for doctrine. It's to keep you in line with this book. And the reason, one of the main reasons I want to have pastor's conferences over there, I want to have every kind of conference you can imagine. And I want us to be totally debt free like we are right now and like we have been for a, since 1988. We're a debt free church, 113 acres, have multiple buildings. God has blessed us. I never owed one dime to Daystar. I've never been in debt one time to Christian television. I've never got up and told people I was going to die if I didn't have any money. I figured if God didn't want me on there and he didn't want you to give it to me, then I might as well just go to my home church, open up my Bible and start another service. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible said the, the word of God is for doctrine. It's to keep us in line with scripture. It's for reproof. That's for convincing. Convincing you of righteousness. Convincing you of the power of God. Convincing you of the gifts of the spirit. Convincing you. It's for correction. It's to make sure you're in line with the scripture, to make sure your literature's in line, to make sure your vacation is in line, to make sure your wardrobe is in line, to make sure your vocabulary is in line, to make sure everything about you is in line. That's what this Bible's for, and it's for instruction in righteousness so that every one of us will know how, that we won't be a, a bunch of babies sitting in high chairs uh, saying, oh, feed me, feed me, feed me. That's all right for somebody that's new in the faith. But brothers and sisters, if you've been in this good way for 10 years or more, and you've already got yourself a mustache, uh, you don't need a bottle stuck in your mouth, uh, you don't need to 
good. But you don't need to have another dose of Gerber. You don't need to have another another bit of, another bowl of cream of wheat. It's time for the church to rise up and see the instruction in righteousness and go from house to house, laying hands on the sick, casting out the devil, speaking with new tongues. You want to preach somewhere? You know where I started preaching? I went from house to house. I stood on the hearth of a fireplace at Oma Jean Blevins' house. Nobody asks you much to preach when you're 16 years old. Nobody's looking for a 17-year-old preacher. They did want me to sing, so they had to have me to, and they did want me to play the piano. They did like that, but then a preaching had to go with it. And it did, I wasn't the best of preachers, and somebody gave me a CD, not a CD, an old cassette. I listened to it, and I said, hide that thing. It, 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 was, it was really weird. It was really strange. One time in the message, I mean, I'm preaching, and right in the middle of my preaching, I go, I'm telling you, ha, right now, ha, oh, glory, ha, oh, glory, ha, let me tell you, ha, oh, glory, ha, I, I feel it, ha, that's what was going on, that's what I was doing, ha, I had, I had a lot of spirit, didn't have much else, but if you just scream and hack uh, and say Jesus every now and then, uh, and you got the Holy Ghost, uh, I don't know how it happened, but right in the middle of that message, I said, I feel tambourine-ish, ha, somebody give me a tambourine, I feel the anointing of tambourine on me. I don't know how it happened, but while I was preaching, people got saved. They got filled with the Holy Ghost because God saw a boy that was full of God that had desire in my heart. Hallelujah. I never got a paycheck. I never even got a pat on the back. I never even got a hope you come back. All I know was there was something inside of me that overtook me that caused me to rise up. And if you want to do something for God, this is Monday night. You must be serious. This must be where the people are that want to drive the devil out of your city, want to drive the devil out of your home, want to drive the devil out of your family. You're no weak-kneed, yellow-bellied here. You're somebody that knows that I want God and I want more of him. Oh, let's give him a shout of praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Ah, yeah. Oh, Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah. He said, Lord, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I'm tired of coming on Wednesday night to the same four people. <laughs> Can't do it, Lord. Tired of riding that bus. Picking up the same, same old, same old. I get them rehabbed one week and they're dehabbed the next. <laughs> oh, Lord. Ah, yeah. And on top of that, Lord, people's talking about me. That goes with the territory. Yeah, he'll anoint you in the city. He'll anoint you in the field. He'll give you shoulder shakes. He'll give you foot stomps. He'll give you some head banging experience. Oh, yes, he will. He'll just move all over you. But I'm telling you, with all of that manifestation, you might as well get yourself ready because you're going to be talked about. You're going to be laughed at. If you don't know if you've been called or not, I'm going to give you the first sign that you've been called. The first sign you've been called, first of all, you're going to feel something. But second of all, somebody's going to start whispering and somebody's going to start jawing and you're going to have to get past the complaints. You might say, I don't think they liked it when, they sung, when I sung. Probably some didn't. But you're not singing because somebody liked it or didn't like it. I don't think the people responded when I talked. I don't think the people really were listening. So what about the people? What's going on? Hallelujah. You think a doctor, when you come in, he says, I don't think they liked the medicine I gave them. I don't think they did. No, we've got a job to do. I said, we've got a job to do. 
If you know that God's called, mom was listening on the radio and mom said she heard this woman and this woman said, oh, I'm called. I'm called to be an intercessor. I'm called to be an intercessor. And mom, she said, I was listening on the television. This woman was saying, I'm called to be an intercessor and I pray that more people will be called. Mom said, I didn't even know that was a calling. She said, I thought that was everybody's job. Who do you think you are? Sitting at your house, chomping on a pork chop. Got a 32 ounce glass of iced tea. Belching every five minutes. Uh, and you don't even, you, you, you gotta have a call. You gotta call an 800 number for somebody to do your praying for you. You have to grab a deacon. You gotta have the evangelist to come. You gotta have somebody all time propping you up while you're sitting there eating pork chop biscuits and gravy and sipping on iced tea. What kind of a, what kind of a prayer warrior is that? Uh, Every person that's born of the Spirit has a censor, and God has called the church to stand between the living and the dead. You're called to be an intercessor. You're called to be a prayer warrior. You're called to be one that stands. Hallelujah. If you don't fight for your family, nobody else will. If you don't fight for your husband, nobody else will. If you don't fight for your wife, nobody else will. And if you don't fight for your children, nobody else will say I'm called and I'm glad I'm called Woo! <laughs> oh, Lord. Jeremiah said this is getting tough Lord so I know what I'll do I just won't speak anymore in that name I just won't speak anymore in that name. I did that once. <laughs> once. Mm-hmm. And you'll probably do it once or twice or three times, maybe four. You might do it a half a dozen. You might do it a lot of times before you make it to heaven. But I did it once real good. I, was, I knew that there was those saying, he always gets that. He always speaks in tongues. He always gives a message out in tongues. He always prophesies. He always sings. He always. Oh, I was in. You know, we're not in the old church anymore, the old days, because the old days, we didn't have those cameras. So it really didn't make any difference who thought what. <laughs> and there was no record of it. <laughs> so if they said something about you, it's their word against yours, so who cares? <laughs> but in the olden days, you'd get an unction in church. And that unction would... You'd feel a song coming. You'd feel a song and you knew it was God. You know what's like, Brother Deal. You all are still far enough down the mountains. You still, you still do that, don't you? It's called the leading. When that leading comes. Oh, glory to God. It's the leading. It's the leading in the old days when your pastor would sit up there in the corner just like this with his arm folded. And all at once that leading get on you to testify. Hallelujah. And you get up and you say, you always start it like this. I was just sitting here thinking. <laughs> and then you go, amen. <laughs> and amen. Whoa, and I begin to think. <laughs> amen. <laughs> and amen. Whoa, and I begin to feel God. <laughs> Amen and, and amen. Hallelujah. You'd feel that leading. I was young and I had the unction. I quenched the spirit on my testimony. Now that was back, now it's in small groups and you better obey God. That's why we have all these small groups. That's why we have Wednesday nights. 
Wednesday nights, listen, you, you, you just let God have his way. And we would like to do that now, but not everybody talks nowadays as spiritual. <laughs> and you want to deaden a service, have an open mic because the looniest tune in the crowd will be the first one up. Oh, I know. They will up say, you know, I've never been here before, but I got something I need to say. And I, well, I say, whisper it in my ear first. <laughs> I want to hear it first silently. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord moved on me to sing, and I didn't sing. The Lord moved on me to testify, and I didn't testify. The Lord moved on me to pray for people, and I didn't pray for people. Oh God, what a shame to get in. I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm talking about God's moving on you. Woo! God's moving on you. And you quench the spirit. 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 All he wants you to do is walk back there and lay your hand on a sister. All he wants you to do is walk back there and lay hands on a brother. You don't have to have an announcement. You don't have to have anybody to advertise you. That's all he wants you to do. Oh, but we quench the spirit and we quench the touch of God. We quench the spirit. And I was just gonna make everybody happy. Well, let me tell you, we have a song in the old songbook, page 180. You know what the name of that song is? Everybody will be happy. Will be happy. Where? Over there. Cause they're never gonna be happy over here. Hey! You're never gonna get everybody happy over here. So I tried it. I quenched my testimony. I quenched my anointed song. I quenched praying for people. I quenched working around the altar. I just was gonna sit and just hold my arms and just fold them and wait for somebody to say, oh, Brother Tommy, we, we've been missing your songs. We've been missing your testimonies. Oh, we just, we just want, we know you must be going through something. Lord, bless him, hallelujah. That's how the old saints would do. They'd say, oh, and from the Appalachian Mountains, Lord is L-A-R-D, Lord, help him, Lord. Help him, Lord and you're waiting for somebody to rub you down and large you down and a Lord help him, Lord help him run your finger through your hair and finally you walked in disobedience so long that finally you go give a little shoe, a little shoo here and you finally, maybe you make it out of your valley, oh that's nothing but the powers of darkness I'm not talking about the praying for you I'm talking about that spirit that wants to hold you back that spirit that wants to push you back and I'm telling you if one of the greatest prophets in the word of God said I got to the point I didn't want to prophesy I didn't want to preach I didn't want to stand and do anything for God again don't you think you're exempt from it every one of you will suffer from it and you're here tonight to hear a word from the Lord that's going to give you a key to overcome it victory to walk in your ministry Woo! So then, I decided, well, I'm going to obey God now. I'm going to obey God now. My little spell's over. There wasn't a song. There wasn't a testimony. I didn't feel led to pray for anybody. I was saying, Lord, who am I going to pray for? He wouldn't even talk to me. What's up with that? I'm ready, Lord. You know, here I am. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Where's that song? So I tried to sing one. I tried to sing one that worked when I was under the anointing before. Yeah. So I tried to do that job, you know. 
Well, woke up this morning, knelt down on the ground. I prayed to God in heaven and the Holy Ghost, and there was no Holy Ghost coming down. This went on. When you're a teenager, three services under this kind, when you're used to flowing in the spirit, three services, nothing was coming to me. I was as dry, I was as dry as an old bucket that had emptied out its last drop. <clears throat> Mom and dad lived over on Maple Tree Lane. I'm about, maybe I'm only 19, I'm not, maybe probably 19. <laughs> I was saying, God, oh God, how long are you gonna spank me? I was used to getting spankings. <laughs> but they never lasted that long. Mom could switch and be over, you know, it's done with. That's why I always opted for the switchings. Hallelujah. I think if you'd have put me in time out, you'd have drove me crazy when I was a kid. <laughs> Just beat me to death, wear me out, throw me on the floor, let me get over it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. It was probably about two o'clock in the morning. Tears were running down my face. Lord, I'll never do it again. I promise you, I've kept that promise. I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. And the Holy Ghost said, I heard him talk now. He said, praise me. I said, yes, Lord. In the morning, he said, no. Praise me now. I said, I can't. Mom and dad are asleep. Brenda's asleep. Everybody's in the bed. I can't be praising you. What in the world would happen if I praise you and that power comes on me like comes on me at church? I said, I can't do it, Lord. I can't do it. And you know what he said? He said, you experience this out of disobedience and it will only return by obedience and I'm telling you one last time praise me and I went oh I praise you oh I pray about that time now I, can I tell the story the way it goes are you sure well, in the olden days, young men only slept in their underwear, all right? But my mom did have a robe just in case I got up in the night or something. And all at once that power went, oh, I thank you, Lord. It's two o'clock in the morning. Oh, I praise you, Lord. About that time the power hit me, I went to head banging, shoulder shaking, jumping, twirling. I couldn't take it. Mom come up, she said, oh my goodness. Heard me in there speaking in tongues. About that time I put that robe on. My kneecaps were even bouncing straight up and down. I had that robe on. I was bouncing all over the house. I was speaking in unknown tongues. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You may go through a battle. You may go through a difficult time. Every demon in hell may be pushing some of you preachers, some of you elders, some of you Sunday school teachers, some of you prayer warriors. Ah, but hold on. I said hold on because the word of the Lord will burn like fire shut up in your bones. Like in your bones. Woo! 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 So a hundred years before they stripped the gold off the temple, so a hundred years, a hundred years, a hundred years before they crashed the gates a hundred years before they burned the gates with fire, a hundred years before Zedekiah's eyes were burnt out and they led him into Babylon with chains, a hundred years before, huh, there's a country boy. He's got a pair of bib overalls on. A 
He's from the heath fields of Tekoa. He was gathering sycamore fruit. Whoa! Some hillbilly, some Kentuckian, somebody, a nobody from nowhere that nobody knew who they was. God puts people like this in the scripture every time you make an excuse that you can't do it, that God's got this thing, it's never going to happen. Every time you get those thoughts, it's not going to happen. It's not going to be me. You just go back and take a look at Amos. Amos said, I wasn't a prophet. I wasn't even the son of a prophet. I was just gathering sycamore fruit. I was out in the fields of Nicoa. But all at once, something started burning in my heart. It started burning like fire shut up in my bones. And God is going to give you something that'll shake off. It'll burn more than your intimidation. It'll burn more than your worldly lust. It'll burn more than your temptations. It'll burn more than what people say about you. It'll burn more than the criticism that goes on. It's the word of the Lord burning in your heart. Well, well. Oh, well, hallelujah, hallelujah. God raised up a nobody from nowhere. And if that didn't happen, hallelujah. All at once, the people you see, whenever God wants to move, he sends the word. The word began to burn in Amos. He said, you can call me whatever you want to. Hallelujah. But he said, that word was burning in me and I couldn't hold it back. Habakkuk, they don't even know quite where he came from. His name means embracer. His name means wrestler. All at once the word started burning inside the bones of Habakkuk. And he began to prophesy just years before that they were stripped of the gold. Years before that, just years, just a few years. And all he wants, oh Lord, all he wants, the first two chapters, Habakkuk is contending with God. Oh God, I don't know why You're going to let this wicked country of Babylon. Why can't you just send us a drought? Why can't you just send an earthquake? Why are you going to let that wicked, evil nation that has walls that are 300 feet wide, 100 feet tall, that are all kinds of evil and abominations, why are you going to allow that? And he contends with God in the first chapter. Then when you get to the second chapter, that word gets a burning a little bit hotter. And all at once the word said, write it down. (laughs) Make it plain. Take the vision, write it down and make it plain. He said, because that same nation that cannot be destroyed, that same nation that boasts of its power, he said, I'm gonna cause it to come down and I want you to write it and make it plain. Not only am I gonna bring the children of Israel home, but I'm gonna destroy Babylon because I raise up kings and I put kings down. I'm telling you, a move of God is not contingent on a Democrat or a Republican. It is not contingent on any type of philosophy. It is not contingent on any type of economic status. It's only contingent on one thing. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word of the Lord. And tonight, if that word would start burning in your heart like fire shut up in your bones, it will change the entire surroundings you get to two and he says oh the just shall live by their faith and then Habakkuk when you get to the third chapter he prays in Shiganoth that's to 
Hilla, pray to fill a prayer. Oh Lord, oh Lord. He said, even if there's no calf in the stall, even if the olive tree doesn't bear olives, even if there's no harvest, yet, 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 we need a yet I will rejoice type of praise. Anybody can praise when you got clothes on your back, shoes on your feet, a shelter over your head. Anybody can praise when you got a good bill of health. But you need a yet will I praise him. And the only way you're going to get a yet I will praise him is if you have the word of God burning in your heart like fire shut up in your bones. Then you will get a yet will I praise him. Yet will I him hallelujah Woo! Woo! shout for me Woo! 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 They come back from Babylon and they begin to rebuild the temple. All and the older men which saw it were weeping because they remembered, oh Lord, they remembered what the beauty of Solomon's temple was and the young men began to shout because they had never seen any temple and they just happy to get one. You couldn't discern the shouting from the weeping. Oh Lord. But then something happened. They quit working on the temple. They laid the foundation and just let it stop. Just let it stop. One year, two years, three years, four, five years, six years, seven years, and more. It's now 10 years. They haven't worked on the temple. Oh, Lord. But there's an elderly man. He's about 87 or 88 years old. Hallelujah. His hair is as white as snow. He's got, I'm sure, he's got some of the few wonderful traits that I have. I'm sure he's got some good, nice, beautiful wrinkles and some age spots. I told that devil in Guatemala, I said, Satan, because they show me all these pictures, what I look like. Oh, that pretty dark brown skin with not even a freckle. And they was going through all of that and that dark black looking hair. And I looked in the mirror and I watched myself fall apart right in front of my face. I feel so good. And then people take pictures of me and I look at it and I go, that's me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel a good 20 years younger than that. <laughs> it's true. It's reality. Yeah. Yeah. Old hag eye. I looked at that in Guatemala and I said, Satan, <laughs> I want you to look at these good. You couldn't get me when I was 16. You couldn't get me when I was 17. You couldn't have me when I was 18. You couldn't have me in my 20s. You couldn't have me in my 30s and in my 40s. You couldn't have me when I was 50 and 56 when I got the shingles. You still couldn't have me. I said, and here I am. I'm in the latter end of my 60s. I got grandbabies and number 14 is on the way. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's a boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. We had to sing that. I got that brother sing that verse again. Glory to God. I was about to shout on that one. Praise the Lord. I said, Satan, you couldn't have me then and you're not gonna have me now. All I can tell you is every time there's a gray hair in my head, that's a reminder to you that I'm an overcomer and I'm gonna run this race with patience. I'm gonna look unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm going through, I'm going through. 
Yeah. That guy's just sitting in his. It's all right if I preach Kentuckian, isn't it? You know, when I was a child and they preached on Paul and Silas, I really believe they both had long sleeve white shirts on and was singing out the red back hymnal. Because that's the way they preached it. That's exactly how they preached it. They say those two holiness preachers. Anyway, let's go on. That guy's just sitting there in a rocking chair. 87, 88 years old. Uh oh. Something starts happening. The word of the Lord. Listen, you go to a service and get emotionally lifted up, that don't last long. You might shake till Tuesday. Most people, it's gone before Monday. I know it. I've been in church all my life. Sunday night service, people are shouting all over. The pastor goes, bless God, let's have a revival. Oh, we're going to have a revival. Come tomorrow night. We're going to, oh, God's going to move tomorrow night. Those same people that was running all over the house. Let's go on. I thank God for the power of God. I thank God for an emotional feeling. I thank God for the shoulder shaking and the head banging. Oh, I had a lot of it last night and I loved it. That brother was singing, singing that. I've got so much to thank you for. Oh, I'm telling you, it felt like my feet were on a, something electric. Oh, it was like a current of power sweeping through here. But you know what? I didn't wake up this way. <laughs> it was good last night. But when I went to get my mower and the, bla- and, the, and the belt had broken and I couldn't get it back on, so I said, that's all right, I got another one. So I went to go get the other one and Tyler has it at his house. And I went, okay, I'll go to Tyler's and I'll get it. I'm getting ready to go to Tyler's and get it. He said, you can't get it. He said, I put my truck in front of the trailer so you can't get it. And by now I'm going, oh boy, where's that Holy Ghost at now? I'm telling you. And then, and then I went to get the refrigerator and Therese says, the refrigerator's leaking. You're gonna have to do something about that. And then, Therese, and then Ashley says, is the, is the swimming pool warm enough for us to swim? Did you turn on the water heater? Ooh, I forgot to turn on the water heater. And the grandkids are coming over. Oh, let me tell you, I loved all that shoulder shaking last night, but at four o'clock this afternoon, there wasn't too much hikamo sikamo going on. I'm telling you, but I will tell you this. I said, I will tell you this. When the shout is over and when the crowd is gone and when everybody's home in bed and I'm fixing that mower, when the word is in your heart, I'm telling you, it'll burn when everything else fades away. It'll burn. It'll burn. It'll burn like fire. Shut up in your bones. Whoa! The word began to burn in the old man. So all of you'd say, I'm just too old. I'm going to let these young people move. I'm just too old. How old are you? I'm going on 55. (laughs) What do you want for the end of your life? You want to go to a retirement place in Florida and play euchre with Gladys? (laughs) Hey, Gladys, pass the cards. Pass the cards, Gladys. I'm telling you, I'd rather go to heaven any day. Put me in some old retirement facility where I can play golf every day. You already killed me right there. A game of golf is all right, but let me tell you something. If that's the only joy I have, I'm ready to go to heaven. I want what mom's got. I want what her grandmother had. I want what my great-grandmother had. 
I want something. I say, Mom, you need to stay home now. You can't go every night. She said, but I want to go, and I can't do nothing with her. Just come right on. Go on. Hallelujah. Dad's 89. He let out a shout last night. Dad, I didn't know if it was going to break your ribs or what. Hey, 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 hey. How can you make it? How, how can you make it? How can you make it this many years? It's going to take more than somebody puffing you up. It's going to take more than somebody patting you on the back. It's going to take more than somebody's little small group. It's going to take more than a basketball game. It's going to take the word of the Lord burning in your heart like fire.
this way. Throw your hands up, honey. Throw your hands up. Let the Holy Ghost move on you. Yay! 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 Hallelujah. Paul, let it burn. Let it burn. Yakashata. I've seen the Holy Ghost move on you, and you pray for young people, and I've seen chains break. Let that power fall through you. Don't ever hold back again. Don't ever, don't ever hold back. None of you hold back. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late to hold back. It's too late. Oh, it's too late. Oh, come on, if you feel like walking, walk. Hey. If you feel like waving your hands, wave your hands. Oh, 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 oh. 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 I'm going to tell you something. If there had not been an old man that only prophesied four months, the temple would have never been rebuilt. But the word, the word, the word, the word. One more. After, after they rebuilt the temple, after Nehemiah rebuilt the walls, you know what happened? Same old, same old. The priest said, we don't need to do this so much. We don't. He said, would you shut the doors for nothing in my temple? This is a lot. The priest began to say, this is a lot to do in the morning and in the evening. Yeah. And the priest, the Bible said, they began to say, we don't need to get those good lambs. You know how delicious they are. Let's bring in the weak lambs. But God raised up Malachi. You know who he was? A nobody from nowhere. They don't have any idea where he came from. All they know is his name meant is my messenger. So when the enemy says, you're a nobody from nowhere. What'll make the difference is not what seminar you go to. People's going to so many seminars, they're coming back with the goofiest things I've ever heard in my life. 
sitting around learning how to prophesy to each other? I don't even want to hear what you got to say. You can tell me whatever you want to, but I want to hear what the Lord has to say. You might got, out, might, might got mad on that one, but why don't you listen to me? You, you don't need to be going all these places learning how to speak in a, if you'll speak yaki kaki tak tak tai, iki kaki tik tik tik, that way it'll cast out a certain devil. Don't you know that devil's, that devil's a lot smarter than that. You can yaki yaki tak tak taki over him and he'll, he'll sit back in the corner and giggle. He knows what's the word of the Lord. And he knows what's your mind. I'm believing the church is going back to the upper room. I'm believing that all nine gifts of the Spirit are going to be in operation. I'm believing what took the tumor out of my brother's face without surgery, without radiation, without chemo in a period of what? Two or three days, one day, 24 hours, however long it took. All I know is that's what I'm believing for. I'm believing for demons to be cast out. But a devil won't be cast out because you went to somebody's little teaching seminar. The only thing that's gonna cast a devil out is the word in your heart. Burning like fire. Shut up in your bones. Oh. Yay. Yay, my coming is soon. Sha la 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 Oh, child of God. Shake yourself. Go ahead. Shake your hands. Shake yourself. Say, I will not be in complacency. I will not be in a lethargic sleep. I will not find my bed, self in the bed and do nothing. Because God is going to put his word in my heart. And it shall burn like fire. Shut up in my bones. Go ahead and shout for a few minutes. Give God the best praise you can give Him. Glory, glory. Give me one of those, I don't know what you call them. They're when you fall in the floor, they throw them over top of you. I call them a drop cloth. I'm listening. I'm hearing something very foolish in my mind. Brother John, I'm gonna need help. Why don't you get you one of these? Brother Joseph, brother. <laughs> Get you one. Yeah. Come on up in your platform with me. Patrick, get you one. Get you one. Ide hede. Das <laughs> tata. This is the strangest thing. All we're going to do is just blow this over you like this when the time comes. 
But in my mind, I hear something strange. It says, pray that tonight my word is going to drop in somebody's heart. And what are we getting ready to do? Fan the flames. We're going to fan the word. We're going to fan the fire. We're going to do it in the name of the Lord. Fire is going to fall. God's going to do it. Situation's going to change. The enemy's going to get burned up. Strongholds are coming down. People are going to get healed. People are going to get set free. People are going to get delivered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hell, it's happening now. The heavens open now. The windows are open now. The fire's falling now. Let God arise. come here hallelujah they haven't even seen nothing yet what's going to happen in your life you can stand there the Holy Ghost says I believe this with all of my heart that the word of the Lord like prophecy is going to start moving in you I know you're shy but that's like Amos I know you say well who am I but that's like Habakkuk I know you say well I don't know if I can do it or not but I believe in the spirit of Deborah. The spirit of Deborah is going to come up on you.
If you believe, God will work a miracle in you. Ha, ha, ha. Your emotions may have died. Everything you dream may have died. But there's one thing the enemy could not touch that was dropped in your heart. It's the word of the Lord. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because that word burns like fire through your trial, through your broken heart, through your discouragement. And tonight is your shift for the betterment of things gonna happen in your life. Oh, hallelujah! if you want to. I'm going to change clothes. I'll be down there too. But until we go to eat one more time, let's let God do something in this house. supposed to sing a slow song and that, that kind of stuff when you invite a backslider to the altar but my goodness you got the spirit shoving you to this altar is there anyone in the house that's a sinner man sinner woman a backslider away from God 
and you need to be restored, renewed, revived, and recover. I'm gonna count to 10, and I want you to meet me right here. You all just go ahead and sing a little more. I can count while you're singing. Come on, if you're a backslider, sinner man, sinner woman, if you need to give your heart to the Lord, don't wait for me to sing coming home. You should have been home already. This altar's open right now. needs to come. I'd get out of that balcony if I was you. Four. What in the world are you waiting for? Do you want Jesus himself to come? You'll miss it if you wait that long. Four. Three. Two. One. Father, in the name of Jesus, restore. you join us tonight we'll be online in the morning at 10 o'clock we got one of america's greatest preachers pastor john Parrish from eufaula oklahoma he's going to be preaching in the morning at 10 he's going to do the 10 o'clock service and the 11 o'clock service he's a dynamic preacher then tomorrow night at seven o'clock if the lord helps me i'll be preaching another message and right now I thank you, partners. I thank you for your prayer for support. You know what you can do? There's about 41,000 of you watching right now. 
I want all 41,000 of you to text about five people. Say, join us online tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're looking for a powerful service. We give God the praise. Lord. We'll see you in the morning at 10 o'clock. Hallelujah. Tommy Bates Ministries exists to connect and change lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And thanks to our Bridge Builder Partner support, the ministry is growing more than ever before. With your help, the anointed messages from Pastor Tommy Bates are able to reach our world with the love of Jesus. The Holy Spirit continues to change lives with the powerful, unchanging message of the cross. Prayerfully consider pursuing partnership with Tommy Bates Ministries today. Your personal commitment and financial blessing to Tommy Bates Ministries makes an amazing difference to countless lives in our own communities and those around the world.